Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at the second gas effect and the concentration effect. This is definitely a concept that was confusing to me at first. In this video, I hope to elucidate for anybody else who practices anything using volatile anesthetics, kind of what these things are. I do want to know before I get started that the second gas effect and the concentration effect are two independent phenomenon, but they are interrelated. We should also mention that this is purely an academic point, and in practice, it's kind of negligible. So let's first start with the second gas effect. Here we have my crude diagram drawing as always. We have our long or alveoli. Uh, the trachea is going to be up over here, and it's going to be connected to our vaporizers that are going to pump in both SIVO and our N2O or nitrous oxide. And we also have our blood vessel down here that's going to run. It's going to really, in reality, wrap around our alveoli, but for the diagrammatic purposes, it's going to run underneath so that we can show how things move. So now remember back to physiology kind of 101 and how different types of gas molecules travel from the alveoli into the blood. At some point, most people should have learned that nitrous oxide, N2O, moves into blood faster than components of room air. That includes oxygen. Now, what we also need to remember is that everything, not everything, but a lot of things in physiology are a function of gradients and movements up and down them, electrical gradients, pressure gradients, etc. And concentration gradients, in this case, no difference. And so what I mean by this is as nitrous moves into the alveoli, it then diffuses into the blood vessel. But the only way you have a gradient, meaning you have more nitrous in the alveoli than in the blood vessel, is if the heart is appropriately pumping to carry that nitrous away to the left side of the heart, thus bringing in new, fresh blood that doesn't have any nitrous. And that keeps your gradient, your concentration gradient of nitrous high in the alveoli, low in the blood that it's traveling into, which then subsequently allows you to continuously move nitrous into the blood, especially at a quick rate if your heart is beating well. On the other hand, if your heart really isn't pumping so well, and your blood is really kind of, you know, in a stasis near the alveoli, the nitrous will basically equilibrate its concentration to you know, its equilibrium within the alveoli and within the blood. And then you get no gradient and you get no further movement. And so the second gas effect is really all about gradients. And what it refers to is the co-administration, sorry, the co-administration of into a plus a volatile anesthetic, most commonly sevoflurane. Now what happens is as nitrous oxide is being diffused into the blood from the alveoli at a faster rate than the volatile anesthetic, it leaves a void of volume within the alveoli. As I mentioned before, just think of it as pressure gradients. The pressure of the volatile anesthetic at the level of the machine and the, the pressure of the volatile anesthetic within the alveoli. As nitrous oxide leaves the alveoli, the pressure within it drops, leaving a larger gradient between the vaporizer and the alveoli. This causes a larger influx of volatile anesthetic into the alveoli because the larger the gradient, the more flow. What this ultimately does is that it allows, and this is the second gas effect, it allows alveoli to fill with more volatile anesthetic faster. Which, in theory, would lead to faster onset of action. 
Now, this same effect can actually be seen with the co-administration of nitrous oxide and pure oxygen. And because of this, you get a transient hyperoxia because as the nitrous oxide moves into the blood faster than the oxygen, you get this large amount of oxygen coming into the alveoli to fill that space. And again, you get a transient hyperoxemia. I'm sorry, hi hyperoxia, not hyperoxemia, hyperoxia, as a result of a quick onset large volume of oxygen within the alveoli. Now I'm just going to erase down here for a second so we can very quickly talk about the concentration effect because that's the other half of this and again they're separate but they are interrelated and so with nitrous oxide leaving the alveoli and being replaced by volatile anesthetic we effectively increase the percentage of volatile anesthetic or it's the same way of saying we concentrate our volatile anesthetic to a part of the lung and remember that a concentration is the relative amount of a substance in a solution well now we've taken our nitrous oxide out of our air solution and it's pretty much all volatile anesthetic therefore leading to a concentration effect or a concentrated uh, area within the lung of volatile anesthetic. So that's the second gas effect and the concentration effect. Like I said, I hope this makes a little bit more sense. I hope that you understand it better than I did when I first started residency. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to write in. Uh, subscribe. Check us out on Instagram, account backwards from 10. And as always, stay tuned for our next video.